being in a relationship with a narcissist is a nightmare. Being in a relationship with a narcissist is tough. It's a dream. It's something that I would not wish even my enemies to be involved in. Now, narcissists are selfish, self-centered, egotistic, egocentric individuals. They lack empathy. They are very arrogant people. The main mission of a narcissist in your life is to destroy you. The main mission of a narcissist in your life is to cause pain in you. It is to, dis it is to frustrate you. It is to completely confuse you. The narcissist wants to control you. And for them to control you, they must manipulate you. And that's why narcissists are said to be masters of manipulation. When you talk about manipulation, I'm talking about triangulation. I'm talking about blame shifting, lying, playing the victim, projection, cheating. The narcissist will spread false rumors about you. They'll go on a smear campaign about you. Narcissists don't care about you. Narcissists don't love you. How can somebody who lacks empathy be able to, to even love you? A narcissist lies to you when they say they love you. What they mean is that they want to hurt you. They want to destroy you. They want to take anything good in you and make it theirs. If they can't have it, then you, can't, you should not have it. When you talk about a narcissist, you're talking about someone who needs constant attention, constant validation, constant praise, constant adoration, constant admiration, constant reassurance, constant recognition, constant acknowledgement. That's what the narcissist needs from you. They want you to keep praising them all the time. They want to be at the center of attention. They want to be always on the spotlight. They want to be, you know, they want to be, they want everybody, everything to revolve around them. When you're dealing with a the narcissist, they must win no matter what. The narcissist will not accept losing. They believe they are perfect. They believe they are unique. A narcissist's opinions are facts to them. They know it all. Talk about any subjects. The narcissist knows it. They believe they are geniuses. They, some narcissists think they are also they are gods. They believe they are so special. They believe they have super power, super, super natural powers. The narcissist is someone who cannot accept to be criticized. If you criticize a narcissist, you are in hot soup. They will swing into narcissistic rage. They'll be very angry with you. They will be bitter. They will be, have grudge. They will, they will make sure they revenge on you. The narcissist has to be criticized. But they are very quick at criticizing others. One thing about the narcissist, they had to be abandoned. A narcissist has to be rejected. They are you saying no to a narcissist. They will become very angry. They will be very wild. Because the narcissist does not want to be rejected. They don't expect a no from you. The narcissist wants you to focus on their needs. They want you to neglect your own needs and focus on them. And if you don't know about the narcissist, they hurt those closest to them most. The narcissist will punish those closest to them more than anybody else. The closer you are to the narcissist, the more suffering you receive. The narcissist treats strangers much, much better than those loved ones who are close to them. If you are in a relationship with a narcissist, there's one thing I'll advise you. I'll tell you to run, run, run. Run now. If you cannot run away from the narcissist because of one reason or the other, if maybe this narcissist is a relative of yours, if the narcissist is maybe a spouse, maybe, you know, a colleague at work or someone, you know, there's other techniques you can use. You can use the gray rock method. You can also limit contact only when you interact with that narcissist, only when necessary. To outsmart a narcissist, you need to understand what they truly hate. To deal with a narcissist, you need to understand what they truly hate. To survive with a narcissist, you need to really understand what narcissists hate. Now, understanding those things that narcissists truly hate is very important for navigating narcissistic relationships, for navigating interactions with a narcissist.
It's very important to understand the things that narcissists had for your mental well-being, for your mental health. Now, you need to protect your, your, yourself from a narcissist. And the first thing is to understand what they truly had. Narcissists are people who have this inflated sense of self-importance. These are egotistic, egocentric, selfish, self-centered individuals. They lack empathy. They have this constant need for adoration, constant need for admiration, for praise, for attention, for acknowledgement, for reassurance, for recognition. Narcissists have fragile egos. They have these insecurities. They are, they are empty shells. They lack true self-confidence. Now, when you are dealing with a narcissist, you should know that they are master manipulators. They use and misuse other people. They use you, they discard you. They exploit everybody around them. They want to control everybody around them to fulfill their own selfish desires. Narcissists do not know how to establish genuine, real, authentic connection with others. They, they don't know how to do it. They can't even reciprocate those connections. That's why having a relationship with a narcissist, it's a tough job. It's a tough business. It's not a piece of cake. Narcissists present themselves as overconfident, self-assured people. But that's a big lie. Narcissists, there are many things they, they, they hate. There are things that narcissists truly hate and they cannot tolerate. Number one thing that narcissists truly hate, they hate honesty and vulnerability. They hate honest, anything honest, anything vulnerable. They hate it. That includes conversations which are honest. Conversations which involve emotions and feelings. They hate those conversations because they lack empathy. And one thing about honest conversations is that honest conversations need transparency. Honest conversations need that ability to be empathetic, ability to understand, to share and understand feelings, other people's feelings and emotions. And narcissists lack empathy. Narcissists struggle with their own vulnerabilities and their own weaknesses. And that's why they, it's very difficult to have this transparency, this honesty in dealings, in conversations with the narcissist. They, they become very uncomfortable with anything that is emotional, you know, because that requires them to engage with, with feelings of others, and they hate that. So, if you are an honest person, if you try to have an honest and vulnerable conversation with a narcissist, most likely the narcissist will start using <coughs> their manipulative tools. They will start gaslighting you, they will swing into narcissistic rage. They will have a rage outburst. They'll be angry at you. They'll gaslight you. They'll triangulate you. They'll go on a smear campaign about you. Now, the other thing narcissists hate is to be rejected, to be, aban to be abandoned, and to be told no. And the reason is because narcissists want to have their needs. And once met without any question, they want you to focus on their needs. Remember, these are selfish, self-centered people. They, they hate to be told no, and they hate it when you set boundaries. And especially when you, after establishing those boundaries and you enforce them, they hate that. Because this challenges the narcissist's sense of entitlement and control. To the narcissist, a relationship is a business. You know, you need to serve their needs and desires. When a narcissist gives you something, be assured it's not a free thing. Be assured they uh, give you something to make profit from you. They need to give you something to get something bigger in return. In short, when they're giving you something, they're using you. Narcissists hate giving. They are takers. That's another word of a narcissist. They are takers. They take, 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 take. It's about they themselves they need to add more and more and more onto their lives because narcissists are empty shells they have they're like they have these holes in them no matter how much you give them they it will never be enough the more you give them the more they want narcissists need to control you they need attention to maintain that 
sense of self-worth and that identity. So when you reject a narcissist, when you tell a narcissist no, when you set boundaries, it threatens that perceived superiority. It threatens that fact that the narcissist believes they are more special than you. And that's why narcissists had to be told no. They had to be turned down. When you turn down a narcissist by saying no, it's, 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 it, you're going to create a big enemy in that narcissist. They will hate you. They will feel bad. They will try harder to make you say yes to their requests. Now, the other thing the narcissists hate, they truly hate with passion, is when you don't give them the attention they need. When you deny the narcissist the admiration, that recognition, that validation, that praise, they will hate you. Remember, narcissists have this insatiable need for admiration and attention from others. They seek constant praise, constant validation, constant attention, constant adoration to validate their fragile self-esteem. When you deny the narcissist that attention, they feel a sense of worthlessness and they will swing into narcissistic rage. They will need to regain that spotlight. So they will start engaging in so many attention-seeking behaviors. They will exaggerate stories. They will try to seek sympathy. You know, they will be angry. They will even manipulate you some more. They need attention. They'll provoke you to react. They don't care if you react negatively or positively. What they need from you is a reaction. Because narcissists thrive on that reaction, that uh, attention that you give them. The other thing the narcissist hate is to be criticized. They hate to be criticized. There's nothing the narcissist has uh, uh, so much more than criticism. They hate to be criticized because they believe they're always right. They hate to be exposed. They don't like seeing, they don't like others seeing them as self-centered people. When you criticize the narcissist and when you expose them to the public, it's like you're painting their clothes with dirt because you have finally exposed them to the general public. So if you want to drive a narcissist crazy, criticize them and expose them. They will be annoyed with you. They will be angry with you. The other thing the narcissist hate, truly hate, is to be ignored. They hate to be ignored because they want to be at the center of attention. So when you ignore the narcissist, they be, feel they feel irrelevant. They feel undermined. You see, they believe they are more important than and superior than others. So when you start ignoring them, they will react with anger. They will react with jealousy. They'll engage in attention-seeking behaviors to regain their perceived rightful place as the focal point. Narcissists hate it when they're ignored by someone, especially their victim. It makes them feel bad and unimportant. So if you want to do something that will truly hurt a narcissist, if you want to do something that will make the narcissist hate you, then ignore them. If you ignore the narcissist words, if you ignore the narcissist actions, or even if you behave as if you don't know that the narcissist exists, they will hate you. Because every all narcissists need attention. They need recognition. They need praise. They need that constant admiration. They need that affection. So they naturally they are allergic to being ignored by people. So when you ignore the narcissist, they will truly hate you. The other thing the narcissist hates is your success. They hate your achievement. You see, narcissists struggle so much to celebrate the success and achievements of others genuinely because they are jealous people. They are envious people. They cannot tolerate anybody else's good fortune. They are very resentful of other people's success and achievements because to the narcissists, they believe, they wish that that success should be theirs and not yours because they think they are more entitled to your success and achievements than you are. We know that narcissists um, always want to have their way. It's always about me, 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 me with the narcissist. They need to have things the way they want them to be. Now, narcissists, one thing they truly hate is uh, when you get angry with them, when you get upset with the narcissist, they hate it. If you want to do things 
narcissist head then try to lose control when you're together lose control and get angry be upset with the narcissist this will shock them they'll be surprised they'll be sh you know they, they will not believe their eyes they'll be angry they'll be annoyed they will they can't believe how can you how dare you get upset with them because the narcissist believes they are the ones in control of that relationship. They believe they're the only ones who should get angry or upset with you. So they get shocked if you're upset with them. Because you've never been upset with them. You've never acted that way before. So they don't like it when you react with anger, when you react with rage. You see, when, when you get upset, the narcissist thinks or sees it as being rebellious to them. They think you are now rejecting them. You are saying no to them. They think you are abandoning them. And that's one thing the narcissist hates so much. Now, the other thing the narcissist hates, number two thing the narcissist hates so much is when you are happy. Remember one thing about narcissists. They are selfish, self-centered people who are very insecure. They are empty shells. They, they feel extremely bad when you are happy with your life. The narcissist is never happy. These are people who lack empathy. They have these dark hearts. They, they, they don't know what happiness is. They want everybody to be like them. They want you to be sad and blue like them. They want you to be unhappy like they are. So, because the narcissist's life is full of sadness, they are always unhappy, they are always anxious, they are always worried. Nothing is enough for them. They keep taking, but they never get satisfied. The more they get, the more they are unhappy. The more they need, they are never satisfied. So, in short, they can't be happy. Now, one thing about the narcissist's happiness. If they are happy, they want you to celebrate them. They want you to celebrate their happiness. Instead of, you, instead of you achieving that happiness. Like them. So, the narcissist, in short, they hate it when you are happy. They believe that happiness should be theirs alone. They don't want you to be happy. They associate happiness with success. And to the narcissist, how dare you be successful? They believe that success should be theirs. They're the only ones who deserve that success, according to them. That happiness you have, that success that you have, to them, it's a fraud. How did you get that success? How did you get that happiness? The narcissist keep questioning. Now, the other thing the narcissist hates with passion is when you're not under their control. You see, the narcissist's main mission is to control you. Their main mission is to destroy you. Their main mission is to cause pain in your life. And for them to do this, you must be under their control. So when you set boundaries and enforce those boundaries, the narcissist will hate you. They hate that. Because that means they cannot control you any, anymore. When you say no to the narcissist, when you reject them, when you abandon them, it means you don't want to be under their control. They'll be angry with you. They'll be annoyed with you. Because the narcissist wants to control you. They want to control everything about, about you. They want to control how you think, how you dress, how you eat, how you talk. They want to control everything in your life. So when, you, when uh, they're not under your control, the narcissist is annoyed, is not, annoyed, is not happy. Remember, these are master manipulators. They will use all their manipulative tactics and strategies to control you. So they hate it when you break out of those, those tactics, when you break out of their control. They hate people who are assertive, people who don't like being controlled. Narcissists hate people who don't like being manipulated by others. They hate it when you leave them alone. They hate it when you abandon them, when you reject them. When you walk away from them. Because narcissists hate loneliness. They need you. 
close to them so that they can hurt you. That's why narcissists hurt those closest to them the most. Now, the other thing narcissists hate, they dislike apologies. They hate when you say sorry. They are proud. They, they, they hate when you force them to say sorry. They hate anything like anything to do with apologies. So when you accuse the narcissist of being wrong, when you tell the narcissist they made a mistake somewhere, when you tell the narcissist that they are at fault, they will hate you because they dislike giving apologies. In short, they dislike being accountable. They dislike being responsible for their mistakes. They never take accountability responsibility for any of their actions. So when you force the narcissist to apologize because they've done something wrong, they will hate you. Now, narcissists hate success. This is a bonus point that the narcissist hates. They hate success. Success Happiness is just the same thing. They hate success. They hate your success because your success reflects bad on them. They think that your success might make them look bad. They also think that you don't deserve that success. They feel that that success that you have came too easy for you. They think that you're not qualified enough to have that success that you have. To the narcissist, they have that image of what a successful person should be. They have that image of what a successful person should look like. And to them, you're not a successful person. According to the narcissist, they are the successful person. And one thing about narcissists is familiarity brings content. They'll get bored easily. One thing about your success to the narcissist is a form of betrayal to them. So, remember what this narcissist will hate you if they cannot control you. They will hate you if you are happy. They will hate you if you expose them. They will hate you if you remind them of who they are not because the narcissist their failures. They are unhappy people. That's why narcissists self-destruct. They will hate you if you are loved by others for the right reasons. They don't want you to be loved. They don't want you to be liked by others. They, they hate that. Remember, narcissists are master manipulators. They will do anything to put you down. They hate anything to do with opposition. When you stand up for yourself or you challenge the narcissist, they will hate you. They want you to always be in their control. So when you oppose them, they get angry. They don't like it when you argue with them. The narcissists always want to be the center of attention. So when you argue with them, it's like you're telling them that they're not good enough. The narcissist wants you to always believe and follow what they say. So, one thing about the narcissist, they hate it when you expose their true self, when you expose them for being the narcissist they are. Narcissists fear being exposed because they fear being seen as flawed or vulnerable. They fear being seen as full of mistakes. And that's why the narcissist will do everything to maintain a face of perfection and superiority. They hate exposure. When you try to end a relationship with a narcissist, you will realize that it is incredibly difficult. So, when you're dealing with a narcissist and that relationship, is about to end the things that the narcissist will do now when you talk about a narcissist this is someone who has that need for constant admiration narcissism is characterized by 
grandiosity a lack of empathy towards other people narcissists believe they are better than everyone else so there are things that a narcissist does at the end of a relationship they will blame you when things are not working out in your relationship the narcissist will pull will put all the blame entirely on someone else they'll accuse you of being the reason why things are not working out they'll accuse you of having destroyed the trust they had for you they'll accuse you of having spoiled or ruined the best thing that the two of you ever had they'll even accuse you of having destroyed their love for you they'll even accuse you of being an appreciative of everything they've done for you some narcissists will even accuse you and blame you of and they'll tell you gaslight you and tell you that you will be nothing without them they will accuse you of being selfish and demanding now towards the end of a relationship with a narcissist you realize the narcissist they no longer listen to you they don't care about your thoughts your, your you know your ideas they don't care about you now at the end of a relationship with a narcissist the second thing that you realize they'll try to convince you that you've made a mistake if you're trying to end a relationship with a narcissist they'll accuse you of uh, of having poor judgment they'll say that you misinterpreted misinterpreted what they said maybe they said something negative about you and when you point it out they'll tell you you know you're wrong they'll accuse you of taking things too personally they'll accuse you of not understanding the stress they've been undergoing they'll even accuse you of, of, of being an overthinker they'll accuse you of being a pessimist someone who looks at the negative side of things too much they even remind you of what about the good times with the, the two of you have had together they will, you might think the narcissist is being positive minded about your relationship and uh, why you should not leave that relationship but these are indirect negative remarks about you in short they're trying to say that there's something wrong with you and there's something wrong with what you're doing the other thing that you realize towards the end of a relationship with a narcissist they'll try to guilt trip you into staying in that relationship you see when the narcissist realizes the relationship is ending they will try to guilt trip you they'll try to pull you back into that relationship they'll remind you of things that they've done for you nice things they've been doing for you so that you don't leave them they even talk about the stress they've been undergoing now if they realize the that is not working then they will switch into the negative side by attacking you emotionally abusing you they'll blackmail you they'll threaten to expose those secrets you've told them about you any complaint that you've raised about them they will turn it around on you they'll blame you for everything they'll scream they'll be hostile they'll even accuse you of being selfish they'll accuse you of being cruel of being unkind of being stingy they'll accuse you of hurting them so these accusations are meant to guilt trip you so that you prove to the narcissist that you're not that kind of a person and that's just exactly what the narcissist wants the other thing about narcissists at the end of a relationship with them they will demand attention even after you've broken up with them they'll need more attention from you they'll promise to change if the relationship is ending the narcissist will promise to change they'll promise to go to therapy 
They'll promise to do everything that you ask them to do. They'll even promise to do things in your way. They'll be so sorry to have hurt you. They'll tell you that they understand why you are angry with them. They'll tell you that they understand why you are upset with them. They'll tell you that you, they understand why you are ready to leave them. They'll keep trying to control you. Because that is their main mission in your life. Now, towards the end of a relationship with the narcissist, they might try to go on a smear campaign and mess up your reputation. They'll spread false rumors about you. They'll attack you socially using their connections, networks, using their flying monkeys. They'll also gossip you. They'll tell your friends, they'll tell your neighbors, your family members, your church members, your club members also. They'll even go on social media and tell the whole world about that behavior, that breakup that is happening in your relationship. They want to, to control you. So they'll spread all kinds of misinformation to ruin your good name. They will lie to everybody. Remember, gossiping is one of the narcissist's manipulative strategies and tactics meant to make you appear as the bad guy, the bad person. And the narcissist, by doing that, they're getting sympathy. And they're also trying to make you reconsider ending that relationship. They want you to beg them Towards the end of a relationship with a narcissist, they'll also do a lot of stalking. You'll meet the narcissist accidentally in meetings, everywhere. Now, the narcissist always appears to be a strong person. They appear to be an independent person. But one thing about them, they are they have fragile egos. They are empty shells. They are extremely needy. So one thing you'll you'll towards the end of a relationship you start seeing the narcissist revealing their neediness. They'll give you constant calls to help them, you know. They'll need some maybe cash, they'll need some some they'll need you to help them fix their car. They'll expect you to keep doing things that you've been doing for them. The business should be normal. They expect you to still, you know, take care of them, take care of their needs. So they'll keep requesting you persistently. And they don't expect a no from you. And you find yourself getting pulled back into that relationship. So all these are things that happen at the end or towards the end of a relationship with a narcissist. Because one thing about the narcissist, they need to control you. When uh, you're dealing with a narcissist, uh, that is a selfish, self-centered, uh, egotistic, egocentric individual who lacks empathy. A narcissist is a taker. They only know how to take, take, take. It's always about me, me, me. They focus on their own needs. It's always about them. The narcissist is a very arrogant person who needs constant attention, constant validation, constant admiration, constant acknowledgement, constant praise. Now, when you're dealing with a narcissist and they know you figure them out, if they know you are onto them, I'm going to give you seven things to expect from them. Number one, they'll gaslight you. When you start exposing the narcissist, when you've figured them out, when you know when uh, they know you you are onto them, then they'll start to do everything they can to convince you that you are wrong. They'll make you question your reality. They'll even accuse you of being crazy. They'll, like, they'll tell you that you're remembering things incorrectly. They'll say that's not what they said. Or they'll say that's not what happened. The narcissist's number one manipulative tactic is gaslighting. It is their best way of defending their manipulation. They will lie. 
to gaslight you. They will gaslight you to convince you that you are wrong. Instead of accepting and owning up to their abusive behavior. Remember, narcissists will never take accept blames. They'll never accept wrong. They'll never, they'll never be accountable. They'll never take responsibility. That's who they are. They'll blame you instead of, instead of accepting their mistakes. The other thing about narcissists, when they know you are on to them, they'll bait you. They know you are trauma bonded. They trauma bond you to keep you hooked to them. They trauma bond you to control you. When a narcissist knows you figure them out and you are onto them, they'll bait you into a fight. They'll provoke you with verbal insults. They need a reaction from you. They need you to, to react negatively. If you can't react positively, then they need you to react negatively. Their main aim here is to get a rise out of you. They want you to scream at them. They want you to yell at them. They want you to shout. So when you do all these things, when you cry, you know, to the narcissists, they are happy because it shows that you still care about them. So when they bait you, don't fall for it. Be cool, be calm, be collected. Be emotionless. Don't react when the narcissist tries to bait you. Now, the number three thing that the narcissist will do, when they know you are on to them, when they know you figure them out, they'll threaten you. They'll use fear to control you. Remember, these are master manipulators. They know some secrets about you. They know more, more about you than even sometimes you know about yourself. So they'll threaten you, to expose you. The secrets you've told the narcissist, they'll threaten to blackmail you, to, exp to, to tell other people about those secrets. Again, narcissists love playing the victim. They'll blame you for things that they're doing themselves if they realize you're onto them. They'll also project They're going to project all their abusive qualities, all their abusive behavior, their insecurities, their flaws onto you. They know you're not like them. So they'll project their abuse onto you because they assume you'll accept it and apologize. They'll accuse you and they'll want you to tell them sorry. Sometimes they will tell you that nobody's perfect. Why dare you accuse them of being a bad person while you are also a bad person? They know you, you figure them out. So they'll also attack your integrity. They'll attack your mistakes, your shortcomings. So that you see the abuse as being normal. And uh, you'll feel that you have no reason or no ground to stand on. That you don't, you should not even blame them. The other thing that happens when a narcissist knows you are onto them, they'll start devaluing you. They will start a big fight. They'll go on a smear campaign to mess your reputation, to tarnish your image. They'll do everything to mess you up. They'll, by, that is all about love bombing. The opposite of love bombing, that is hate bombing. They'll start hitting on you simply because you figured them out they'll blackmail you they'll smear your character they'll destroy your name and you know what they'll also discard you when they know you're on to them they will dump you they'll they might decide that you're not worth their effort, worth their time. So they will dump you, they'll discard you. Because you're trying to expose them. So they'll spread lies about you. And they'll go get some new partner. So when you realize that the narcissist knows 
that you're on to them. You should expect that they'll gaslight you. Every opportunity they get, they'll try to gaslight you. So don't let them gaslight you. Sometimes the narcissists will even threaten to commit suicide. They'll threaten to hurt themselves, to get back at you. They'll use every trick to make you believe that you are wrong. That is all about gaslighting. So when the narcissist knows you figure them out, I'll advise you to, to leave. Leave that relationship. Quit. Walk away and never look back. Go no contact if possible. And again, you should ask yourself, do you think it's very... It's good, it's bright, it's being clever, exposing the narcissist. Is it worth it? I'll tell you, it accomplishes nothing. What it does, it's, it provides the narcissist with an opportunity to hoover you back. It gives the narcissist an opportunity to fight you emotionally. Sometimes when the narcissist knows you figure them out, they'll get violent. And they'll be extremely vindictive. So when the narcissist realizes that you don't care, they'll go full blast on a smear campaign against you. They will turn even your family members. They'll turn your friends. They'll turn your colleagues at work. They'll turn your support system against you. If they realize, realize that the relationship that you have is falling apart, they'll do everything to destroy you. They'll use their flying monkeys to fight you, to destroy, to put you down. So, when a narcissist is exposed, just know it will be very dramatic, it can be very chaotic, it can be very dangerous. And uh, the narcissist will not take it lightly. They will definitely hit you back. So if you are trying to expose the narcissist, just know that this it's a war. They will gaslight you if they know you've exposed them. And they'll try to get inside your head and to make you feel that you're the crazy one. So if you decide to end that relationship with them, they will use a technique we call hoovering to get you back into that relationship. They'll use words. They'll use their words to put you on a pedal stall. In an attempt to suck you into the web of splendor. So the narcissist will not let you go. They will want you back in that hole. They will want you back in their hands, in their pocket. One thing about a relationship with a narcissist is what we call trauma bond. Developing trauma bond with a narcissist will make it extremely difficult to leave that narcissistic relationship. You'll try to leave that relationship many times. But it will not be easy. You'll always end up taking that narcissist back into your life. The big question we need to ask ourselves in this video is why is it so difficult to get over a trauma bond to a narcissist? A trauma bonded person may react with anger. If you tell them that they need to stop the abuse, they may even look down upon you. They may insist that that abuser, that narcissist loves them and that what you think is abuse to them is actually love, it is actually romance. So when someone is being trauma bonded, they like they'll tell you that they're being loved. So what are the, some of these characteristics of a trauma bonds? 
when you're trauma bonded by a narcissist or to a narcissist you'll feel unhappy and you may not even like your partner any longer but you will feel still you you will still feel unable to end things when you try to leave that narcissist you'll feel physically and emotionally distressed when you say you want to leave that narcissistic relationship the narcissist will promise to change but they will make no effort actually to to, to change when you're in a relationship with your narcissist and you're trauma bonded you'll find yourself fixated on the good days you lose those good days with that narcissist to prove that they truly care and that they truly love you when you're trauma, trauma bonded with your to a narcissist you will make excuses and you'll find yourself defending the narcissist's behavior when other people express their concern when you're trauma bonded to a narcissist you'll continue to trust them and you'll hope to change them you'll hope that the narcissist will change when you're trauma bonded to a narcissist you'll find yourself protecting them by keeping that abuse secretive now one thing about trauma bonds they may still linger in your life even when that abuse from that narcissist happened a long 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 time ago you'll find it very difficult to stop thinking about that narcissist who hurt you and from time to time you'll feel that urge or that need to reach out to them or try to have a relationship with them again when you're trauma bonded with a narcissist you'll feel inextricably attached to them as a survival mechanism and you'll find it very very difficult to leave that narcissistic relationship if someone always mistreated you and you always felt unhappy in that relationship it would be an easy thing for you to leave that relationship but narcissists they know what they're doing if you find yourself in a narcissistic relationship that you can't seem to leave then it's highly likely that you are trauma bonded so a trauma bond is an unhealthy connection between an abuser and the abused person healing from a trauma bond healing from trauma is a process that happens over time and uh, with patience and with great care so the two main factors that allow the creation and continuation of a trauma bond are a power imbalance and what we call intermittent reinforcement we feel something is missing if we don't have that anxious environment with periodic flashes of love and tranquility now what can you do to break free from a trauma bond? You're trauma bonded with a narcissist. How what can you do to break from that trauma bond? The first thing you need to do is to become aware about the trauma bond and uh, educate yourself about the trauma bond. Acknowledge that you're trauma bonded. Become aware of what is happening to you. You need to be aware about this manipulative technique of trauma bond that keeps you psychologically addicted to that narcissist. If you're not careful, you may get stuck in that relationship for many, many, many years. So the first step to break a trauma bond with a narcissist is to acknowledge that there is a problem. It is to acknowledge that you're actually trauma bonded. It's, a, it's to acknowledge that you are in an unhealthy relationship and that it's time to break free from that trauma bond. Once you are aware that you are trauma bonded, then you can begin taking the steps to break that trauma bond and to heal your emotional wounds. You need to learn how to identify the signs of unhealthy or signs of narcissistic relationships so that you can unmask that trauma bond. The second thing to break the trauma bond, you need to recognize the triggers, the memories, the emotions that are, are associated with the narcissist and avoid them. The other way of breaking the trauma bond is to get 
your money right. Make sure you're strong financially. Because narcissists, they maintain trauma bonds sometimes through financial resources. The other thing about the trauma bond is um, you should go no contact with that narcissist to break that trauma bond. Go grey rock or go low contact depending on your circumstances. Create some space between you and the narcissist. Cut off all contact between you and the narcissist. Now, uh, to break free from the trauma bond, you need to also write down your thoughts and emotions. When you're in that relationship with a narcissist, sometimes you'll feel confused, you'll feel overwhelmed. So, you can start writing down your emotions. It will help you stay grounded and it will help you be in touch with reality. Narcissists do not validate your experiences and emotions. They will deny the abusive behaviors and they'll project the abusive behaviors onto you, their victims. And this can be very confusing and it can lead you to question your own sanity. And you will find it very difficult to know what is real and what is not. So the other way of breaking your trauma bond to a narcissist is to rebuild your confidence. When I talk about rebuilding your confidence, I mean you start focusing on your goals and your hobbies. And start taking those baby steps towards those goals and towards those hobbies every day. Spend and put a lot of time and your energy into yourself daily. That way you will slowly break that trauma bond with the narcissist. So work on yourself, work on your well-being. Stop blaming yourself. Focus on self-love. Stop being too difficult on yourself. You need to believe in yourself and you need to stand up for yourself. Focus on now. Observe that relationship from a different perspective. Stay focused in the present. Right? This is one of the best ways to motivate yourself to break that trauma bond with the narcissist. So take an honest look at the narcissist's behavior. Do you like how they treat you? Do you hope things will be different? Remember, being emotionally involved and attached to a person makes it more difficult to be logical and to be rational. So, if you've developed a trauma bond, you will end up craving your abuser's attention and affection, just like a drug. So, break that fear that you have with that narcissist. Establish and set boundaries. When you set boundaries, it helps you in breaking free from the trauma bond. So, you need to start by identifying your needs and values. Then, clearly communicate them to others. Right? Set healthy boundaries, even in future relationships. Identify your needs and your values. And make sure to clearly communicate your boundaries with your partner. Be honest and direct about what is important to you. Setting healthy boundaries is very important aspect of any healthy relationship because it will help you to establish trust, it will help you to establish respect and mutual understanding between you and your partner. So, to break free from the trauma bond, you need to surround yourself with good friends and family. Surround yourself with people who strengthen you. All right? Make sure you have a strong support system. And that way you'll be able to break free from the trauma bond. You can join social groups as well. Practice good self-care. Self-care is very important. To get over trauma bonding, you need to stop being submissive and stand up for yourself. Take care of your needs. Right? Because taking care of your needs it does not mean you're selfish. But it is an act of self-love. Self-love and self-care involves activities that reduce stress and promote physical and emotional well-being. So, start self-care through exercising, journaling, engaging in a hobby or activity you enjoy, listen to music, get some good sleep, eat well, spend time with trusted family and friends. No. So, be kind to yourself. Make future plans. Think of how you want your future to look like. Allow yourself to envision more of yourself and make plans to realize that future. Develop healthy relationships. Give yourself permission to heal. Acknowledge the positive qualities that make you special, unique, and irreplaceable. That way, you can break that trauma bond together with seeking professional, professional support to get over that trauma bond. 
A trauma bond, in conclusion, is a type of attachment that forms in abusive or unsettling relationships where the victim feels emotionally trapped to the abuser. So that is one thing about trauma bond. So breaking a trauma bond with a narcissist can be a very long and challenging journey, but it's very important to prioritize your mental health and your well-being. You really deserve better, you deserve to be loved, you deserve respect, you deserve to be valued. Narcissists lack sympathy. Narcissists are selfish people. They have this inf inflated sense of self-importance. They have a deep need for constant admiration, constant validation, constant uh, praise, constant acknowledgement, constant recognition, reassurance, adoration, constant attention from others. So. They can be very manipulative. In short, ma narcissists are masters of manipulation. They have this ability to, 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 in short, they have this inability to take criticism. They are very jealous people, envious people. They think everybody is jealous of them as well. And they tend to have this arrogant attitude. They are very proud. Now, narcissists act the way they do because they need too much external validation. When a narcissist discovers that you found them out, when they know you figure them out, number one, they will start manipulating you emotionally. They'll try to play with your mind. They'll try mind games. They'll try to play on your emotions. They'll use guilt, fear, tactics to play with you. They'll guilt trip you. They'll make you doubt your own perceptions or emotions. They will also start a smear campaign against you. When a narcissist knows you figure them out, they'll threaten that they'll expose you. They'll threaten to expose those secrets you've told them about yourself. They'll start a smear campaign against you. They'll spread false rumors about against you, they'll gossip, they'll lie about you to damage you, to damage your reputation, to ruin you completely. They want to look you to make you look bad. They and they believe that they can destroy you and they'll want everybody to see that you're someone who cannot be trusted. They'll turn people against you, including your own friends your own family members, your trusted, you know, group of people, including even your colleagues, they will want to turn them against you. The main goal of the narcissist smear campaign is to isolate you, to make you feel alone. And they do that because you've figured them out. Now, once you figure the narcissist out, they could also discard you. They can also disappear without a word. This can confuse you, it can hurt you. So they'll do this to, to maintain power and control over you. So the narcissist will try to gaslight you. They, they'll gaslight you because you've discovered who they are, you figure them out. When the narcissist feels that their power or control is being threatened, then They'll make sure they, they behave in a way to make you question your own perception or reality. They will deny the truth. They will minimize the impact of their actions. They will twist facts. And this can make you feel confused. It can make you feel disoriented. It can make you feel doubt your own memory and sanity. So they'll create false narratives that makes you doubt your initial findings. The false narrative will make you doubt that the narcissist is actually a narcissist. Now, the narcissist gaslight you to, to make you feel more dependent on them for validation and guidance. And this will re reinforce the narcissist's power and control over you. So it is very important to recognize the gaslighting technique and uh, get some support from your trusted friends and family members or professionals to help you regain your sense of self and reality because the goal of 
narcissist gaslighting is to get you to doubt yourself so that you no longer challenge the narcissist authority so that you keep quiet so that you you actually stop thinking that they are a narcissist again when you you know you figure the narcissist out they'll start triangulation they'll use triangulation to manipulate you to control you when i talk about triangulation i mean the narcissist will bring in a third party to undermine you they'll bring a third party to make you jealous they'll create some sense of competition this third party could be a family member it could be a, your own friend it could be you know a romantic interest they do this to to confuse you they will also project you they also pro, they use they, they also use projection because you figure them out you know they start projecting their bad behavior onto you when the narcissist knows you figure them out they 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 start accusing you of the very things that they are doing if they know they can't control you because you figure them out they'll play on your emotional side they will use all their gimmicks to prey on you they'll make you sympathize with them they if they are cheating the narcissist will accuse you of being a cheat or being unfaithful if the narcissist is abusive they'll accuse you of being mean of being an abuser of mistreating them so when the narcissist is projecting what they are doing right back onto you then the narcissist truly sees and believes that you are the one who's done all those awful things not them that is in their own in their own warped reality so when the narcissist knows you figure them out the other strategy is baiting they'll bait you this tactic is uh, whereby the narcissist intentionally antagonizes you it is where the narcissist intentionally pushes you and entices you into an argument because they want to get a heavy reaction out of you so when they attack your integrity they know that they will hurt you the most and uh, they will know you will bite and they know they'll they'll get you so riled up and uh, you'll feel the need to defend yourself against the attacks and uh, that is what they want now once the narcissist has baited you into a fight they'll switch to cool calm and collected they'll appear that they are cool calm and collected while you you'll be left standing there screaming yelling shouting and feeling totally out of control and uh, that is what the narcissist needs they they make you look crazy person you know they bite, they bait you into that fight so they get do things to get to get under your skin and they push your buttons they tease you and make fun of you and their main goal here is to make you so angry that you scream at them that you lash out at them so when the narcissist knows you figure them out they might also decide to stonewall you they might decide to give you the silent treatment if they can't get you to go into a rage or to gaslight you then they will go silent on you so when they do this they are doing this to punish you and to manipulate you so the narcissist because they know you figure them out they'll completely shut down and refuse to talk to you when they do this their main aim here is to make you feel isolated and to make you lose control so stonewalling or going silent is another is i mean stonewalling is is is, is basically just silent treatment so you'll be left uh with feelings of frustration invalidation you'll feel isolated and all alone you'll feel shut off from expressing your own truth because the narcissist has gone silent on you now when the narcissist knows you figure them out they might also try to create a trauma bond that trauma bond will confuse you it will rattle you up when a narcissist has lost power then they will create a trauma bond Trauma bonding is where the narcissist gets their victim to feel so loyal and emotionally connected to them that the thought of leaving them even if they don't love you is too hard for you to 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 to, to do it. So a trauma bond is basically the series of toxic behaviors that the narcissist displays. A trauma bond is an emotional attachment that develops from repeated manipulative behaviors and traumatic experiences. 
So the narcissist creates a pattern of abusive and manipulative behaviors that are normal to them. So trauma bond is often used by narcissists as a way to keep you hooked in the relationship so that you'll continue to tolerate the narcissist's bad behavior. So, if you're not careful while dealing with a narcissist, you might easily end up being trauma bonded and this will prevent you from fighting back. Because cutting yourself off from a narcissist is not easy, it's very difficult. The narcissist is a master manipulator. They will do everything to make sure that they hook you up. Now when the narcissist knows you figure them out, they'll also go on a narcissistic rage. They'll get angry. You know? They will try to intimidate you. They will use their power and influence to make you back down. They will also deny and deflect. They will deny any wrongdoing and they, def and they will deflect any criticism. They will also play the victim card. They will also blame shift. You know, When they know you figure them out, they will resort to blame shifting. They will divert all responsibility for their actions onto you or onto someone else. They may try to devalue you because you figure them out. They'll play the fear uh, card, you know. This means that they will start pointing out all your weaknesses and playing up your fears. They'll make you feel like you're not good enough and that you can't survive without them. This is because you've discovered who they are. So they'll also try to attack your integrity and your past mistakes because you've figured them out. They'll try to blackmail you. They'll try to continue that narcissistic abuse. They might even try, threaten to hurt or kill themselves. Again, they might, solve, they might also use their flying monkeys or they might start to hoover you and love bomb you because you figure them out. When you move on from a narcissist, they get angry. They don't take it lightly. Remember, narcissists believe they're always right. Narcissists are selfish, self-centered people. If there's one thing the narcissist hates is to be rejected. It is to be abandoned. It is to be left. That is the narcissist's worst, night, worst nightmare. When you move on and uh, leave the narcissist, abandon them, it's a personal attack on their character. That is something they cannot take lightly. So, the narcissist will not let you move on easily without a fight. They might start calling you while drunk in the middle of the night, crying on the phone about how heartbroken they are because you've gone. They will do everything to get you back. They'll start hovering you. They'll start sending you gifts, buying you expensive gifts. They might even promise to take you on expensive vacations. They'll start taking you on expensive dinners. They'll start doing things that they promised they'll do to you years ago just to get you back because they've realized you're moving on. Now, when an RCC sees that you're moving on, they'll feel hurt, they'll feel angry. Nothing hurts the narcissist more than knowing that you moved on and that you don't love them anymore, that you don't care about them anymore. When they realize they have no control over you, then they get hurt. When the narcissist sees that you're moving on, they will be revengeful. They won't go down without a fight. They'll want to hit you back. What they need most is their reputation to remain intact. How dare you move on? When you move on, the narcissist gets jealous. They see their partners as an extension of themselves. So when you try to leave them, when you try to walk away from them, they feel rejected. They feel insulted. And this results in them having some self-doubt. So they will attack you or they will attack your new partner because of jealousy and envy. They believe they're the best. They'll become jealous because they think you're moving on to something better without them. So they'll become very insecure. They'll think they're not good enough. When the narcissist 
sees that you're moving on, they will not take responsibility for the breakup of that relationship. They will always play the victim. They'll blame you for the breakup of that relationship. They blame you for moving on. Narcissists are incapable of self-reflection. They'll blame you for, for anything that has gone wrong. They will make sure they do everything to ensure that nobody else can love you. They will do things that will make you get despised by everybody. They'll want nobody else to do things they've done for you before. When you move on from a narcissist, they will also try to love bomb you. They'll try to love bomb you so that you go back to them. They'll want you back, not because they love you, but because they are wounded. They must win. They must control you. They must maintain that false self-image. So, the narcissist will want you back because you're trying to move on. They can't allow that to happen. They'll also promise to change if they see you're moving on. So, expect some expensive flowers and gifts, love notes saying, I'm sorry. You know. They'll try to do this to remind you of how good that relationship used to be. Narcissists hate abandonment. If you try to reject and abandon the narcissist by moving on, you trigger what we call narcissistic injury. Remember, the narcissists have this inability to regulate their emotions. So, abandonment is catastrophic for the narcissist's internal and external stability. So, narcissists have this underlying fear of abandonment caused by attachment styles along with other psychological issues. So, this underlying fear of abandonment creates something known as the shame rage spiral. A narcissist can't regulate their own emotions. So, the feelings of shame will be all over them when you try to move on. So they'll be very angry because you're moving on. They will, the narcissist will hate you. They'll project on you. They'll feel cheated. When you move on, the narcissist will feel that they can no longer control you. They won't believe that you've moved on. They are always assured that no one can leave them. So when they know that you are dating and seeing someone else, they will doubt it. They'll do everything to show that you won't be able to move on from your life without them. They'll act strangely and crazily. They'll pretend that it doesn't bother them, you moving on. They'll become more manipulative. Because you're moving on. Now, narcissists, when they see that you're moving on, they will also try to use flying monkeys. These are people who will help the narcissist to, to smear your name. The narcissist will start spreading false rumors about you. And they, they use the flying monkeys to do that. The narcissist will use the flying monkeys to spread incriminating gossip and lies about you. The flying monkeys could be anybody. It could be your family members, your close friends. It could be your colleagues at work, your neighbors. It could also be the narcissist's friends, relatives. So the narcissist will enlist these flying monkeys so that they can help the narcissist spread lies and false rumors about you to destroy you. If you want to teach a narcissist a lesson, then there are things you need to do.
Remember, narcissists are master manipulators. Narcissists are selfish people. They lack empathy. They, what they need most from you is constant attention, constant validation, constant praise, constant acknowledgement, constant adoration. The narcissist only focuses on their needs. They use and misuse others. Their main mission is to punish you. Now, if you need to revenge on a narcissist, number one, don't beg the narcissist. Do not beg for the narcissist to love you. Do not plead for them to take you back. If the narcissist has abused you, forgive yourself. If possible, walk away. You deserve respect. You deserve self-respect. You deserve self-value. You deserve self-love. Don't beg the narcissist to love you. Now, the second way of revenging on the narcissist is to walk away. There's power in walking away from the narcissist. Ignore them and go no contact if possible. If you can't, if you can't go no contact, then go the grey rock if you need to punish the narcissist. What I mean is, no matter how hard it is to leave that narcissistic relationship, Try as much as you can to walk away from them completely. Cut everything off, including the narcissist's cell phone number. Block them on social media networks. No, block them on Facebook, on Instagram, on WhatsApp, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Do not allow the narcissist to contact you on anything. Remember, the narcissist knows your weaknesses. So they will always try to manipulate you again and again. You'll never win the game, the manipulative games with the narcissist because they're masters in that game. They've been there for a long time. So, ignore them. Walk away from them. Stay away from them. If you see the narcissist on the road, pretend that they are trees to you. Behave as if they don't exist in your life, in your dictionary. Behave as if they're dead people to you. Ignore them completely and walk away. What with the narcissist, if you want to hit them, if you want to revenge, then be smart all the time. Look your best. Live your best life. Learn to love yourself and to be happy on your own. Choose to shine. Choose to be happy. Choose to have the best life that you've always imagined having. having. Enjoy, enjoy yourself. And live your life without limits, without worries, without anxiety that way you will cause so much pain in the narcissist it will be like a slap in the face of a narcissist because the narcissist does not want you happy they do not want you successful they had to see you having fun they had to see you doing well for yourself the narcissist believes that their mistreatment will torture you continuously. So when you fall in love with yourself, the narcissist will be in pain. So to deal with the narcissist, live a good life. Learn to be happy on your own. Learn to be selfish and focus on yourself exclusively. To revenge on narcissists, reconnect with your friends, your old friends, reconnect with your support system, build a support system, strong, uh, support, a strong support system. The best way to go about it is to rebuild and reclaim your old life. Do not isolate yourself because what the narcissist needs in you is for you to isolate yourself. They need to see you totally helpless and alone. That way they can be able to control you and to play games on you. So to revenge on a narcissist, you can also criticize them. There's nobody who's more sensitive to criticism than a narcissist. They hate criticism. So if you want to frustrate a narcissist, then criticize them. If you want to revenge on a narcissist, don't take authority from them and in fact what you should do you should, you should take authority away from them because narcissists feel safe 
when they are in control of any interaction. They need constant validation. They need constant approval. They fear strong individuals and they fear authority figures because they want to control everything. So, to frustrate a narcissist, also, do what the narcissist told you not to do. You had your own goals, you had your own dreams. The narcissist told you to stop following your dreams. So, reevaluate things and reinstate the dreams that you wrote off, the dreams that you stopped dreaming because of the narcissist. Chase your dreams. This way, you will teach the narcissist a lesson. You will get your confidence back and it will be a slap on the narcissist's face. To revenge on the narcissist, you can also say no. Learn to say no to the narcissist. They expect you to do whatever they want, whenever they want. So don't do it. The narcissist thinks everything should revolve around them. So always stay calm, cool and collected. When you say no, when they request something, say no. If they try to change your mind, maintain your no. And get rid of the narcissist's gifts if you want to revenge on them. Throw them away. The narcissist will start love bombing you. They'll buy you expensive gifts, flowers, and so on. If possible, get rid of them. Sometimes you might not need to throw out some gifts they've given you. But you can decide to donate those gifts to charity. Or you can throw them in the trash. Or you can burn them. But they need to disappear from your life. That way you break the chain of power they have over you. And you will start to heal. So the other thing to do to revenge on a narcissist is to go no contact. Because the narcissist crave, crave attention. And they will panic when you stop giving them that attention they need from you. So to, to revenge on a narcissist, expose them and expose their behavior in public. The narcissist's public image is a great antidote to their behavior. So when they lie or gaslight you in front of others, call them out. Because the narcissist will do or say anything to try and humiliate you back. But don't worry about that. Expose them to get your revenge. Again, you can choose to succeed in areas that the narcissist wants, the, the, the areas the narcissist they dominated. Or the areas that the narcissist wants to dominate, choose to succeed in those areas. One thing about narcissists, they fear direct competition because they want to be the best. They want other people to feel less competent, less capable, less skilled than them, or less valuable than them. So, to the revenge on the narcissist, try to make them jealous. Trick the narcissist into doing, what, into doing you a favor. Beat them at their own game. You can also bore the narcissist to death. Because narcissists harass people they find entertaining or useful. So you can do the grey rock method when dealing with them. Don't react to anything they say, to anything they do. If they ask you a question, no, you can limit your responses to yes or no. They'll get bored and they'll be irritated when they realize you have nothing to offer them and that they can't get a rise out of you. When they try to provoke you, be calm, cool and collected. Don't react. If you don't react, the narcissist gets angry. It pains them because they need that reaction from you. They need you to lose control. They need you to scream. They need you to yell at them. They need you to shout at them. So don't do it. That way you frustrate them. And that will be a big sweet revenge for you. Narcissists want emotional reactions or personal information so that they can use that against you later. If they don't get this, then they will leave you alone. The other thing you can do to revenge on narcissists is to always be happy, forgive and forget. 
your happiness and your success are the ultimate revenge on a narcissist. If you want true revenge, then be happy. Be successful. Forgive and forget about that narcissist because this makes you the ultimate bigger person and that is something the narcissist will never be. You can also revenge on the narcissist by focusing on self-care. The narcissist's main intention is to put you down, to damage your self-esteem. They inflict emotional and psychological trauma to use you and to destroy you. So, work out on yourself. Allow your friends, family and support networks to lift you up. The best revenge on a narcissist is success is happiness move on with your life leave the narcissist in the past they belong in the past you focus on the future that way you make the narcissist become insignificant to you and that's the best revenge now don't react to them When you want to teach a narcissist a lesson, cut off the narcissist supply because they always want attention from you. They need constant attention. They need information. They need reactions from you. They don't care if the reactions are negative or positive. But if you want revenge, don't give them any of that. Stop focusing on the narcissist. Don't focus on the narcissist games. Focus on yourself and create your new life. If you can't do no contact, then try and set boundaries. Don't tell the narcissist anything about your new life. No, the best revenge on a narcissist is no reaction. So work on yourself, become happy again. Don't give the narcissist any attention they need. Let them live with themselves. Leave them in the past and create a much happier future and life. How to hurt a narcissist. Narcissists are people with an inflated sense of self-importance. They need excessive and constant admiration. They need excessive and constant praise. They need excessive and constant uh, attention, uh, acknowledgement, reassurance, recognition, adoration. And... Um, these narcissists lack empathy for others. Narcissists are highly sensitive to criticism. They are highly sensitive to anything that is perceived as threat to their self-image. The narcissists will go to great lengths to protect their self-image. If you criticize a narcissist, they see as if you're challenging their dominance, then they'll become very angry. You'll trigger a defensive response from them. Narcissists, they use and discard others. Their main aim is to manipulate you, it is to control you. The narcissists are constantly trying to protect themselves from feelings of inadequacy or worthlessness. So they will do anything and absolutely anything to protect that. They care about their reputation and their, about their image. Narcissists, they are self-centered, selfish, self egocentric, egotistic individuals. It's always about me, me with the narcissist. Now, how do you hurt that narcissist? If you want to hurt a narcissist, you need to take control away from them. That is the best way to hurt the narcissist. You need to take back control from a narcissist. It's not easy, but it is possible with the right strategies because narcissists have this extreme need to dominate other people. So if you are in a relationship with a narcissist, just know that they hold some power over you. They will want to control and maybe probably they're controlling your social life. They're controlling how you think, how you behave. They're controlling your finances. They're controlling your hobbies. They're controlling even your emotional well-being. So you'll constantly find yourself focusing on the narcissist needs and feelings. You'll feel as if you're under a spell, you know, from the narcissist. You'll feel as if you're under the narcissist spell. 
and you need to take back that control to hurt the narcissist. So one thing you need to do to hurt them is to limit contact with the narcissist. Remember, the narcissist will continue to manipulate and abuse you. So you need to limit the interactions that you have with the narcissist. Yes, they'll try to cover you, but don't fall for it. They'll also try to bait you. You know, the narcissist wants you to react. They need a reaction from you. They need you to react, whether negatively or positively. They don't care. They need a reaction from you. They want you to yell. They want you to scream at them. They want you to, you know, to throw insults, verbal insults at them. They feel good when you do that because to them, that means you care about them. They, it means that they, are in, they have control over you. You see? It gives them what we call narcissistic supply. And that's why narcissists thrive in chaos. They thrive in conflicts. They thrive in drama. So, to deal with them, to hurt a narcissist, remain and stay cool, calm, and collected. All right. When you engage with a narcissist, you're just feeding their ego. So, limit and minimize contact with that narcissist, if possible and whenever possible. Reduce the communication that you have with the narcissist. Avoid situations where you know that the narcissist will be present. This is one way you're going to hurt the narcissist. It's not easy, especially if you this is your relative, close relative, or maybe this is, uh, uh, is, is a very close family member, is someone that you have children with, a spouse, or someone you're cooperating with. It's not easy to limit contact, but you can do that. So when you limit contact, also make sure you establish, you set and establish firm boundaries. That is not easy because establishing firm boundaries alone is not enough. You also need to enforce consequences if those boundaries are crossed. Prioritize your own well-being, your own mental health, good, uh, your own uh, happiness, and focus on your own growth by distancing yourself from the narcissist. Distance yourself from that toxic relationship. That way you hurt that narcissist in a big way. Remember when you said boundaries, the narcissist is going to be unhappy. They're going to be hurt because that is the only way they have to control you by being close to you. So when you said boundaries, it's like you're limiting control from the narcissist. They'll be so bitter. They'll be in pain. They'll feel hurt. They'll be angry with you. So when you challenge the narcissist's dominance, you are going to hurt them in a big way. It's not easy to challenge a narcissist's dominance because narcissists have this extreme need and intense need for control and power. They need power at all costs. When you challenge that dominance, then you're provoking the narcissist to react. You're provoking the narcissist. You're annoying them. They're going to become aggressive. They're going to swing into narcissistic rage. They'll be so bitter and angry with you. So, when you challenge their dominance by establishing and enforcing boundaries, the narcissist is going to be extremely hurt. But by doing that, you're protecting yourself from the narcissist manipulation and emotional abuse. So, you need to identify what are you willing to tolerate from the narcissist and what you're not going to tolerate and how are you going to enforce it. That is what the idea of establishing and, enforce, and enforcing boundaries is all about. And again, focus on self-care. Focus on loving yourself. The best way, way to deal with a narcissist is self-love. Narcissists don't want to feel like you don't need them. They don't want to feel, they don't want to feel that you are better off without them. They don't want to imagine that you can make it without them. They don't even to think that you love yourself the way you are. So build your self-confidence. Build your self-worth. The narcissist will be hurt when you do that. And again, spend time with your support system of trusted friends, of trusted uh, uh, family members. Spend time with your loved ones. When you spend time with people who love you, people who support you, that is something that the narcissist will not like. Because there is no way they'll be able to manipulate you easily if you have a support system close to you who will always tell you that things are not right. So have a support system that will help you to process your emotions and to validate your experiences. That's why if you realize one thing about narcissists, they will always want to isolate you from your trusted friends 
and trusted family members. They want to isolate you from your support system so that they can play games with you, so that they can control you, so that they can inflict pain in you. So when you rebuild and strengthen your supportive relationships, what you are doing is taking away the narcissist's power. You are taking away that power and control that the narcissist has in your life. So when you hurt the narcissist, they'll go through what we call a narcissistic injury. And most times the narcissist will want revenge. You see, they don't just let things go easily. They'll want to punish you for causing pain in them. They'll be so angry and their anger will be clear. They will start more manipulative tactics on you. They will spread rumors against you. That is, they'll go on a smear campaign to tarnish your name. They will go on, they might stonewall you. That is, they might do some silent treatment on you. They'll gaslight you. They'll play the victim. They'll try to blame you. So the narcissist actions are driven by the need to protect their self-image and to maintain control over others. That is why the narcissist will do anything to, to damage your reputation. They'll do anything to make you regret hurting them. They'll want you to go back to them and beg for forgiveness. You see, they want you to, to they want they want power back from you. They want they want to have full control over you. So when the narcissist is upset, be ready for all those more manip be ready for more manipulation from them. Be ready for more narcissistic abuse from them. Remember one thing about the narcissist, there is no way they'll accept defeat. To the narcissist, they must win no matter what. Winning is a must because to them, they have to win. They hate failure. They hate being losers. To them, they believe they're the best. Their opinions are facts. They believe they, they're superior and more important than everybody else. So when you hurt the narcissist, they will be so bitter and they'll want to revenge. They'll want to hurt you too. They will scheme and they'll plan and plot on how to, to deal with you. They'll explode into rage physically, verbally, or even sexually by attacking you or even your property. So when you have the narcissist, be prepared. The narcissist will discard you once they're done with you. So how do you know a narcissist is finished with you 100%? Now, one thing is that the narcissist will no longer hide their true colors. They will show you who they are. They will show you that they are a narcissist. When a narcissist is done with you, when they no longer care about you, when they no longer hide their abuse from you, then you will know they're done with you. They will no longer hide what they are trying to do. They will show you on your face how sadistic, how cruel, how mean, how demons they are. These are evil spirits. They are demonic. The narcissists will show you who they are. They will punish you if they are done with you. They will, they will not care anymore. They, not, they don't need you. Once the narcissist is finished with you 100%, you will feel that change. You'll feel that there's something is different. You sh you'll feel that you, 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 you feel the narcissist is not the same person. You'll feel that they are more confident with their goal of destroying you, of punishing you, of draining you with disrespect. They will devalue you. They will not care about you. They will milk, they will take every self-love that you have and take it for themselves. Now, if your narcissist is finished with you 100%, they no longer love bomb you. Those expensive dinners, those expensive gifts, flowers, necklaces, you know, vacations, that will be done, gone. They don't care anymore. No more love bombing. No more giving you attention. They no longer see you as worth keeping. You are valueless, worthless to them. That's a sign they're done with you. They are finished with you. When a narcissist is finished with you, they'll be constantly get they'll get constantly irritated with you. They don't care about you anymore. They will 
they, they will not care. They will, you can even sleep on the floor and they don't care. You might even go hungry and they don't care. They don't care about your life, whether you die, whether you survive, whatever happens to you, that's your own problem. They are not irritated with you. They, 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 you are you're like they, you, they, you don't exist to them. It's like you're dead to them. That's a clear sign the narcissist is finished with you 100%. The other, the other sign that the narcissist is finished with you 100% is that they ignore everything you do, everything you say. They don't care anymore. They ignore you. When you're talking to them, when you're conversing with them, they don't care. They ignore you. It's a waste of time giving you attention to the narcissist. They don't care anymore. They'll be busy chasing something else. They'll be busy hunting another supply. Now, if a narcissist is done with you, they will constantly criticize you, no matter what, no, whatever you do is not good enough to the narcissist. They'll always criticize it. Whatever they used to love, they don't, they now hate it. They're finished with you. They'll criticize you constantly. Everything about you will be susceptible to the narcissist criticism. They will be, they'll criticize you about your, your weight, about how, about the way you eat, the way you sleep, the, you are, you, you are, you are, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you smile, the way you laugh, everything about you will be, will have faults. They don't care about you. They are finished with you. They don't love you. and They don't care about you anymore. They are finished with you 100%. They will always be distant because you are useless to them. Your presence is bothering them. Your presence is disturbing them they are done with you they don't care about you anymore so they'll be they'll try to keep a distance from you that way you'll know the narcissist is finished with you they will gaslight you if they're done with you they'll accuse you of being crazy they'll say that uh, you have a problem with the way you think they'll, they'll accuse you of having a problem with your memory that is what gaslighting is all about they make you question your reality you may even think there's a problem with you. That is mind games that the Nazis love playing on their victims. When they're done with you, they will cheat on you. They'll be very unfaithful. They'll, be, they'll not be loyal to you in any way. They'll no longer hide that they are unfaithful to you. They'll cheat on your face. They'll be, then they'll show you that they're cheating on you. They'll be unfaithful to you. They'll show you that they're unfaithful to you. They'll be so cruel to you. They will not care. They will torture you. They'll frustrate you. They'll even accuse you of cheating. They'll accuse you of infidelity. That is projection. They will accuse you of what they are doing every day. That is a sign that the narcissist is finished with you 100%. They make you feel bad by accusing you wrongly, accusing you falsely for cheating, accusing you for infidelity, when they, it is them who are doing that. So, they'll accuse you of even being a liar. And we know very well, the narcissist is the master of lies. They lie all the time. They lie to manipulate you. They lie to control you. When they are bored with you, the narcissist will do anything to make you feel bad. They'll accuse you of lying. They'll call you a liar. They do that to gaslight you, to manipulate you, to drive you crazy. There's no reason for them accusing you, but they'll still accuse you. Of being a liar they don't care about you anymore they are done with you they're finished with you so they accuse you falsely of lying they accuse you of being jealous while it is them who are jealous of you they'll accuse you of being envious while we know the narcissist is the one who's envious they are jealous about your success they are jealous when you're happy they are envious when you make it in life they are they're jealous when you're smiling and laughing and being happy they don't care about that they don't care about you. They want that happiness, that success to be theirs. They are full of envy. They'll accuse you of being envious. They'll accuse you of being jealous. Well, it is them who are that way. They'll take advantage of you because they are finished with you. They'll take advantage because there's something that the narcissist is still need, needs from you. So they'll, they'll keep taking advantage of you. A narcissist who's finished with you will mistreat you. They will not pick your calls. They will not pick, they will not even answer your text messages. 
They might even block you on certain on their social media platforms. They'll play mind games on you. When you call them, they will delay even picking those calls or they may not even call back. Because to them it's a waste of time conversing with you. They'll be spending time hunting for some other new supply. And they'll always be bitter and angry with you. A narcissist who's finished with you 100%, they're always unhappy with you. They're always irrita irritated with you. They're always in search of something better than you. They'll always be busy hunting for new victims because they're done with you. They're finished with you 100%. They'll always be busy trying to find a new target. Their focus is no longer on you. Their focus is trying to get a new target because they want to get a new target before they discard you. They no longer try to persuade you to stay. They no longer need you to convince you to stay with them. They're done with you. They don't care what you do, what you say. They may even be wishing every day quietly that you leave them so that they can accuse you of having left them, so that they can accuse you of being the cause for the, for the breakup of that relationship. They will always view you as a threat. They'll view you as the problem. The reason why the narcissist is still keeping you is because they see you as a threat. You know? They view you as a big threat because you know so much about them. You might expose them. You might even mess their plans. So they keep you for some time until they are they are sorted out. Now, the narcissist, if they are finished with you 100%, they'll start, you know, taking better look, uh, taking better care of themselves. You see, you'll see them updating themselves, you know. Uh, apart from busy, of, of them being always busy, going out, hanging out, uh, you'll see them taking good care of their looks, you know, working out, dressing to kill, uh, being, you know, they're trying to woo another victim. They become too busy and they'll, they'll never be at home because they're busy hunting for a new partner. And then, if the narcissist is finished with you 100%, they will belittle you constantly. They will look down upon you constantly. They will throw insults, verbal insults at you. They will, they will be showering you with belittling comments. They don't care about you. Their main goal is to destroy every little self-love and confidence that you have. They will give you that empty, that cold stare. You see? They don't care about you. They're done with you. They will not waste time with you. They have no time for you. They'll no longer take you out on dates. They'll always be busy. But you'll see them going for dates with other people. You see, you'll see them mingling with singles. They will also ghost you if they are finished with you 100%. They'll flirt with others and they'll let, they'll let you see that they're flirting with others. They'll even wish that you die. They don't care about you. They are finished with you. Whether you die or not, they don't care. You see? They will stop talking to your friends, talking to your relatives. They don't care about you. They'll spend everything they can from your money. They will use your money, misuse your money. They will misuse your assets. They'll spend all your assets before leaving you. They'll want to milk you dry. They will even start abusing you physically. When you see that happening, just know the narcissist is finished with you. Is finished with you 100%. They'll also decide to tell you the truth that they no longer care about you. They no longer love you. And they'll look at you straight in the eye and tell you that they have never loved you. They'll tell you everything has been a lie. They'll not, they don't even respect you. And they will discard you in a ruthless manner. New common narcissistic traits that you did not know. Narcissists are mysterious people. They're people who think narcissists are evil spirits. They're demons. They're heartless. Their main mission is to destroy you. Their main mission is to punish you. Now, there are some common narcissistic traits. I can call them new traits that you need to know. Number one, narcissists like to be the center of attention. Narcissists want to dominate conversations. They, fe they feel compelled to talk about themselves all the time. Narcissists always want to exaggerate 
their achievements they want to exaggerate their their accomplishments they always trying to impress their audience they want to portray themselves as the most trusted advisor in the room or the most trusted advisor to the boss they want to be seen as the most popular person in the area or in the neighborhood when you want to identify the narcissists just listen to them talk about the achievements they will fabricate and exaggerate the accomplishments and achievements they want to be seen as perfect they want to be seen as the best now there are common trait of a narcissist they love giving unsolicited advice they will always be recommending the best uh, shop the best supermarket the best market the best restaurants in town to visit the best cinema halls they they, they believe they are they, they know it all they believe they are geniuses they have superior knowledge than others they always think they know a little bit more than everybody else they always appear to have some kind of inside information on almost everything that is a clear sign of a narcissist remember narcissists have, have fragile egos and they're always trying to bolster their inflated sense of self they're always trying to be seen as more important more special more unique than everybody else another common trait of a narcissist they hate waiting in line they are very impatient people these narcissists they want their needs to be attended to instantly they need their, they they want their needs to be met right now this minute this second they want automatic compliance because they believe they are more special than others they believe they are more important than others they are unique than others so they have this sense of entitlement they must win no matter what another common trait of a narcissist they are extremely ambitious they believe they are unique beings with some natural superpowers they believe they are more powerful than everybody else and they always want to be more powerful they believe they are more beautiful and they are always thinking of how much they can be more beautiful they believe they are more they are, they are richer than everybody else and that's why you find narcissists they want to associate with other people of equally high status they want to be associated with the successful people so that they, that they can be seen as successful they have this constant need for adoration for admiration for recognition for acknowledgement for praise they expect to receive special treatment because they believe they are more superior than others again narcissists appear very charming they can make you feel very important from nowhere now the narcissist is an expert at love bombing they are also very competitive highly competitive they must win to them they can never lose it's either you they win or they lose they must win in every area in every domain now they they have to be seen as the most superior person to everybody else now with the narcissist they 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 are they are known for holding grudges if you want to know someone who can keep a grudge forever that's a narcissist they 
you cross a narcissist, they don't forgive easily. They will hold grudges. They will remind you about something that you wronged them years later. They see others like them. If they feel you've rejected them or if you've abandoned them, they don't get over it easily. Because to the narcissist, you abandoning them, you rejecting them, it's unfor unforgivable. They'll get very angry and they must seek revenge in one form or another. And with a narcissist, they're never at fault. They never take responsibility for mistakes. Even your own mistakes, they'll blame you. If it's their mistakes, they'll blame you. They'll never apologize for the mistakes they do. Instead, they'll blame you for those mistakes. They'll, or they'll blame someone else. Narcissists believe that there is always a winner. Again, with a the narcissist, they're always taking advantage of people. They use others. They misuse them, then they discard them. The narcissist has to ask themselves, what is in it for them? So they use you, then they dump you. They also crave for these high levels of self-esteem and self-worth. Because remember, the narcissist is an empty shell. They are empty inside them. They are weak people. They have low self-esteem. They have low self-worth. And that's why narcissists will hurt most those closest to them. They'll punish most those closest to them. So if you're dealing with a narcissist, be careful about these traits that I've just been I've mentioned them. And once you discover that someone could be a narcissist, my best advice for you is to walk away. And even don't look back. Walk away, run away, stay away, go no contact if possible. Don't go back to that narcissist. One thing about narcissists, they all follow the same pattern. That is, idealize, devalue, discard, and then hoover. Not only that, narcissists have a certain way of behavior, which is common to all of them. It's they, they have this way of talking to manipulate their victims. And that's why narcissists are said to be master manipulators. Who exactly are narcissists? Narcissists are people who lack empathy. They are arrogant people. They use and misuse others. Narcissists need constant attention, constant validation, constant adoration, constant admiration. Now, there are certain things that narcissists are likely to say in relationships. And uh, they will say them in the different stages. And there are things that they will do in the different, in the, in the different stages of a narcissistic relationship. When you meet a narcissist, you should be very alert. Because narcissists love engaging in love bombing. They will pretend to be your world. They will pretend to be your, your Mr. Perfect or your Miss Perfect. They will pretend to be everything you've ever dreamed of, everything you've ever wanted. But they, they, later, they later let you down and discard you. Love bombing is a manipulative tactic used by narcissists to play games on their victims, to manipulate their victims. My, uh, love bombing is all part of the narcissist's plan to control you completely. So, when you talk about the narcissist, in the first stage of the, dealers, uh, of the idealization stage, that is where the love bombing is pervasive. A relationship with a narcissist will move very, very quickly. Within a week, Sometimes within a day, the narcissist is talking about marriage with you, planning a wedding with you. Now, in the first first days, the first weeks, 
in a in a relationship with a narcissist they'll tell you that you are their better half they'll tell you you are their soulmate they'll tell you that they've never met anyone like you before they'll tell you that you understand them so much better than anyone else they'll say that it's fate than that put the two of you together they'll even tell you that the the two of you do not need anyone else that you are perfect together that you'll be together forever they even tell you how beautiful you are how smart how intelligent how creative how good hearted how kind how perfect you are they even tell you that you are their only friend now that's a narcissist once the narcissist knows they've hooked you once the narcissist has hooked their victim they change and show their true self no more hiding no more playing games they show you who they are a real narcissist they'll start insulting you they'll start putting you down they'll criticize everything about you all the imperfections in your life they'll pinpoint them out the main name is to mess with your confidence is to lower your self confidence it is to destroy your self esteem they know that for them to control you they have to make sure that your confidence is very low now they will also try to be a little loving as they also verbally insult you so that you think that maybe those insults are your fault so this is all part of the gaslighting strategy that the narcissist employs in the devaluation stage they will tell you that there is a problem with your head in this devaluation stage they'll accuse you of being too sensitive they'll tell you that nobody likes you they'll tell you that everybody hates you they even say what's wrong with you they like you of being manipulative so they'll play the victim and project their behavior on you they like you of being so insecure they even ask, ask you if they are more are they more important to you than your friends so all these are mind games they're playing on you they are trying to isolate you from your support system they're trying to mess your life again they will also try to explain their bad behavior by deflecting projecting victimizing themselves or scapegoating another person to distract you from focusing on their failure or their shortcoming they'll explain their behavior that bad behavior they'll explain it if they are challenged they'll say that they are like that because their parents treated them badly they'll say that they were cheated on by their exes they'll say love doesn't exist they'll even say that they have a problem they'll remind you about how things used to be good when you started your relationship they'll even accuse you of being selfish they'll even ask you to stop blaming them because you should know that they have a problem now uh in short they'll criticize everything you ever loved the narcissist in the devaluation stage they'll criticize they'll criticize everything their victim loves and they'll try to isolate them so now in the devaluation stage the narcissist will try to devalue everything you love everything their victim loves they'll try to devalue your hobbies your interests they'll even try to devalue your family they insult everything they can they even tell you i don't like your friends they're not good good enough for you they will they'll, they'll they'll say what you like is not good it's terrible they even be shocked how can you enjoy this and that they even accuse you and say that your family doesn't like them they will guilt trip you and make you feel lucky to be with them 
Believe say if you really love me, if you really cared, then uh, you know they're just trying to play games here. So you need to have boundaries in place. So they'll try to guilt trip you so that you feel like you're a bad person. They might even say that you are lucky to be with them. You are lucky to have them as your man or your woman. They even say that you are so lucky to be receiving their time and attention. So they again they'll try to play your they'll try to play with your head. Now, in the devaluation stage, the narcissist will try to attack you verbally. They'll say everybody hates you. They'll accuse you and tell you that you're a bad person. Nobody else will ever love you the way they love you. So this gaslighting will affect you. They even accuse. Uh, they even tell you be uh, have fun being alone. They even say that you did that to yourself. They even tell you things will get worse. So, being in a relationship with a narcissist is not easy. Now, once the narcissist has devalued you, they'll end up by discarding you. They dump you because they no longer see you important to them. They no longer see you value, valuable to them. You are worthless to them. They've, they've milked you dry. So they dump and discard you. But later on, once the narcissist sees that they still need you, if there's something good in you, if, there's, if they think that there's something they need from you, which they're not getting elsewhere, they'll try to work things around to come back to your life. And that is hoovering. They'll come with fake apologies, fake stories, I'm sorry, and they'll also come with fake promises. That is future faking. Being in a relationship with a narcissist is not a piece of cake. It's a tough job. It's tough business. It's not easy being in that kind of a relationship. It's very difficult. When you're in a relationship with a narcissist, most of the time you'll be angry, confused, lonely, sad. People might think you're going crazy. You'll always be empty. You'll be feeling empty inside you. Now, being in a relationship with a narcissist is not easy. And what the reason why it's not easy is because narcissists, these are people who lack empathy. They are very arrogant people. They don't care about your needs. It's always about their needs. They are self-centered, selfish egocentric, egotistic individual who only care about themselves. It's always about me, me, me with the narcissist. These are individuals who need constant adoration, constant admiration, constant acknowledgement, constant recognition, constant reassurance, constant validation. They need constant praise. Now, dealing with such kind of individuals, it's not easy. They want to always be on the limelight. They must win. They think they are superior than others. In fact, they believe they are more superior than you. They believe they are better than you. They believe they are unique and special than you. In fact, being in a relationship with them, they think they are doing you a favor. Now, how do you disarm and destroy a narcissist? Number one, establish clear boundaries. After setting those clear boundaries, enforce them. That is one way of disarming and destroying a narcissist. And the reason is because narcissists hardly respect other people's boundaries. They'll often try to cross them. So you need to mark your boundaries clearly because the narcissist's behavior is ego-driven. Remember, narcissists have fragile egos. There are empty shells within them. They need external validation to be able to survive. The way we need food to survive, the way a vehicle needs fuel, the way we need oxygen. That's the same way a narcissist needs validation, external validation, attention, admiration, recognition, validation. So 
When you set boundaries, you will make the narcissist very angry at first. But this will be useful for your well-being. To be, it will be protecting your privacy and your worth. The other way, when you when you establish those boundaries, make sure you are less accessible to the narcissist. You need to ask, you need to decide for yourself what behavior is acceptable and what behavior is not acceptable. You need to tell the narcissist what you're going to tolerate and what you're not going to tolerate. When you set boundaries, you you it allows you to not break them. And this prevents you from falling into the narcissist's many manipulative tactics and strategies. So, make sure you have those boundaries in place and enforce them. Make sure you have what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior and it should be clearly communicated to the narcissist. When the narcissist realizes that, you have boundaries. They will know they can no longer control you. They, they, they need to. They will know they are, they are done. They are, they are cooked. They will know they are in hot soup. It will piss them off. But this will give you some respect in that relationship. Now, their way of disarming a narcissist and destroying them, it is never to react Avoid being overly emotional to narcissist provocations. The narcissist will bait you. The reason they will do that is to force a reaction from you. They don't care whatever reaction you give the narcissist, whether small or big. They are happy. The narcissist needs some reaction from you. So when you don't, when you don't show any emotions to the narcissist, it's like you are it's like you are mocking the narcissist. When you remain calm, cool, and collected, you'll make the narcissist confused. That's the best way of disarming that narcissist. Be calm, cool, and collected. When they provoke you, don't react. Be composed. Because the narcissist is forcing a reaction from you, that is what is that is what keeps the narcissist moving. That is the validation, the attention the narcissist needs. They expect you to scream. They expect, they expect a loud and outgrowing reaction from you. They expect you to yell at them, to shout at them. So when you remain calm, when you remain cool and collected, composed, you create havoc in a narcissist's mind. And that way, you disarm and destroy them. The other way of disarming and destroying the narcissist is to focus on building your self-confidence, on building your self-esteem, and working on your well-being, and, 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 and work on self-care. Being in a relationship with a narcissist is not easy. You need to take good care of yourself. You need some self-love. You need self-respect. You need to work on your self-esteem. You need to work on your self-pride. If you don't, you'll start feeling worthless, valueless. Because the narcissist's main mission is to destroy you. It is to destroy your confidence. It is to destroy your image. They want to be seen as more superior to you. They want to be seen more superior than you. Therefore, they will always attack your self-esteem. They need to see you with some low self-esteem. That way, they can easily play games on you. They can easily manipulate you. So you need to work on your self-esteem. Build your self-confidence. That can be developed by working on yourself. Take good care of yourself. Taking good care of yourself helps develop your self-esteem and your self-pride. So work on your self-confidence. Work on your goals. Work on your mental peace. That is very vital towards your self-care. To disarm and destroy the narcissist, you can also go grey rock. Or you can limit your access to the narcissist. When I talk about going grey rock, I mean be as boring as a grey rock. When you're interacting with the narcissist, be dull. When you're conversing with them, just maintain your responses to yes or no. Be disinterested with them. You can also limit your access to the narcissist. This saves you, saves you from dealing with them. 
when i talk about limiting your, your access to the narcissist i mean i mean cut communication cut off communication with the narcissist you can go silent on the narcissist ignore them completely if possible if the narcissist is not able to reach you they get pissed off it's a big turn off to them they get angry they will realize they can no longer control you and this is how you give yourself room to heal and to move on when they call you don't pick up calls block the narcissist on all, all your social media platforms block them on facebook block them on twitter on instagram block them everywhere do not meet the narcissist give the narcissist a dose of silent treatment they'll be confused how can they control you if they can't get access to you remember these are selfish self-centered beings and every relationship you have with a narcissist it's always about them it's always about how they are going to benefit so when you go no contact with the narcissist when you cut contact with them they get confused so get help from your support system to disarm and destroy the narcissist make sure you surround yourself with a strong support system of trusted friends of trusted family members they can help you and save you from emotionally being drained being abused by the narcissist when you feel overwhelmed overpowered emotionally by the narcissist that's a, that could be a good time to get to seek support from your support system made up of your parents siblings friends you know therapist close relatives or any loved one that you can rely on emotionally now to disarm and destroy the narcissist you can choose to hurt their pride hurt their ego you can decide to give them a, a dose of their own medicine and that is by saying no to them there's nothing that the narcissist hates more than to be told no when you say no to the narcissist they feel rejected they feel abandoned and uh, if there's one fear the narcissist has is the fear of being abandoned the fear of being rejected it hurts their pride and ego they'll be hurt and their ego would burn to ashes so when you hurt the narcissist's pride and ego it will have some very deep impact on them you will destroy them they'll feel humiliated they'll they'll be agitated when you hurt the narcissist's pride or ego they they will be like they'll feel insulted and that way you would have disarmed them and destroyed them now thank you for watching this video remember above all the easiest and best way to deal with a narcissist is to choose success be successful there's nothing that the narcissist hates most than you being successful so choose success be successful be happy always thrive focus on your hobbies those things that you love doing do them choose to shine and above all go no contact with the narcissist go zero contact with the narcissist and move on with your life thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my youtube channel if you've not done so thank you